Hi, check out what I scored on eBay. Woohoo! It's an ultrasound machine. Check it out. I got it for uh, next to Nix. Um, sorry, I can't get this in shot here. It's a bit, uh, bit hard. It's um, about a mid 90s vintage ultrasound machine. It's an ATL brand, um, HDI 3000. And it's not supposed to be working. There's supposed to be like some sort of software uh, fault with it or something like that. But uh, I thought we'd um, pair it up and have a look. Yes, I'm going to do a teardown of it, but that's going to be quite some work. I just wanted to see if it actually worked. Uh, the thing is, this thing weighs a ton. Uh, we had to hire a ute to transport this thing and to get it back, it weighs about 200 kilos. So to get it on and off the truck, we had to actually take out all the cards, the power supply, the monitor, had to disconnect everything. Uh, to actually transport it back here. So hopefully it didn't do any hardware damage. I've installed the cards back in their original uh, configuration. It does come with all the probes and everything. Vital if you're gonna get one of these um, ultra sound machines, which you can, they sell a lot of these on eBay. Anyway, picked it up for next to nothing. So I think it cost more to hire the ute than it did to actually buy this thing. So anyway, let's power it up and see what happens. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Now, just to give you a very quick look at the boards inside this thing, uh, we've got ourselves an analog power supply, a digital power supply, that's all plus uh, five volts. We've got a, uh, what they call a master power supply, plus minus 12 volts, minus five, and a variable one. Then we've got uh, a disc controller here. It's a magneto optical disc. I've actually got, um, it's taped on the back of the unit. I've actually got one of the, I don't think it's original, I don't know if it's original or not, but anyway, it's got some uh, software for it, so that might come in handy. Uh, we've got a front end uh, controller board here, and all these boards, these are all heavily shielded. Look at this, all this RF braiding all down here. They've got PCI, um, uh, PCI connectors on here, and this board here is an analog interface module, then we've got a Doppler acquisition board here, and then we've got uh, uh, channel boards, so we've got eight different uh, channel boards, you can physically see they're a bit different here, and these PCI slots down here actually plug into, this is the backboard here, and you can see all the uh, PCI slots here, that actually plugs into there, and bingo, there you huge uh, custom multi-way connectors for your three uh, ultrasound probes, which I've actually got with this thing. So this screws on here, heavy, heavy amount of shielding, absolutely massive. And that shielding plate was manufactured 94 by 3D manufacturing, I guess. All right, let's power this puppy up and see what we get. Uh, by the way, yes, there is a, like a processor or some sort of PC um, in the back. There's a, like a whole nother rack in the back. I didn't show you on the front there, but anyway, Fingers crossed, let's power this thing up. Pretty sure I got in the boards in all the right uh, slots. Anyway, um, yeah, let's go. Is it, it's on here, so, yep, let's go. I hear fans. I hear fans. I see a, I see a lead blinky down down the front on the board, but uh, don't see anything on the Monda. There's no hard drive beeps or anything like that, but it's certainly powered up. It's very, very quiet. Um, is that maybe it takes a long time to boot. Wouldn't surprise me. It's going to be an ancient architecture, probably even based on a previous uh, incarnation of this. Like this went from the HDI like there's the HDI 5000 after this, this is the HDI 3000, it's probably based on technology before that, so it wouldn't surprise me if the processor is uh, pre that. But, geez, now it's really taken a long time. There is a, there is a LED flashing down the bottom there, you can see. Um, I do have the full, uh, like a user manual and field service guide and everything for this, so all sorts of troubleshooting guides and stuff, so hopefully um, we can do something. Maybe it's just like the screen brightness or something uh, incredibly dumb like that, perhaps. Hmm, let me have a fiddle. Dull! As it turns out, this thing has 
two power switches. There's the one on the back which um, just basically powers up the things, turns on all the main fans, and yes, <coughs> um, the powers up the power supplies, blinks the lead down the bottom, but that doesn't actually switch the thing on. It's ta -da, over here. There's a secret power switch hidden under here, so here we go. This has to do it. Hang on. There's a standby, there's an off. No, just standby and on. Okay, here we go. Woo! Yes, lights, camera, action. I don't have the probes plugged in. Whoa, test pattern. Beauty. We have a test pattern. It's booting. It's booting. This is looking real good. It's got a trackball on it. I assume now it will take some time to boot. That test pattern might have come from the uh, ROM, or is it part of the OS that when it boots? I can see lead sequencing going through on the power supply down the bottom, but... Okay, could take a while. No, yeah, here we go. Woohoo! Yes! HDI 3000, a system diagnostic. Aha! This is the error message we were getting. Oh. Oh. It's gone. I just went to uh, film that. Oh, here we go. Is that the same error message? I'm not sure. Anyway, um, here it is. A system diagnostics error has been detected. Please record all the following information and call technical system CPU mop reported ambiguous error during boot up. What's an ambiguous error? And what's a mop? I know what a CPU is, but I don't know what a mop is. Um, I'm not sure if the field uh, service guide would have anything. Uh, it's the year 2029, is it? Or 1929? Hmm, yeah, they probably didn't uh, cater for uh, the <laughs> Y2K um, bug, perhaps. Anyway, um, Oh, and yeah, that, um, that's a bummer. So there you go. That's exactly what was displayed in the ad for this thing, is that it had some sort of diagnostic issue. So what do we do now? Well, we uh, probably get in there and measure power supplies and things like that. First rule of troubleshooting, thou shall measure voltages. And there's a whole bunch of test points um, on the front here that uh, allow us to do that. Once again, I don't know what all the LEDs uh, do. That could be in the uh, manual or manuals. So we'll see. But uh, I, I'm not sure, you know, it wouldn't give you that if the probes weren't plugged in, uh, for example. Surely not. Um, that's, you know, there, there's something else. There's something, there's something wrong with it. So, yeah. Troubleshooting time. And you'll notice how there's a bar across there. It looks like the uh, camera um, shutter speed's exactly synchronized with the monitor there. <laughs> Go figure. Anyway, um, I'm just rebooting this. There we go, MOP, reported hardware error during boot up, MPS hardware test failure. Hmm. So we have uh, some sort of problem with the MPS hardware, whatever the MPS hardware is, and yeah, MPS MOP. So, yeah, MPS hardware test failure. I wonder if, you know, well, read the manual. We can probably figure out what that is. You know, if there's something obscure on the board, then we could be, you know, in, in deep, deep trouble. But uh, I'm not sure. I think it's, uh, well, go back to the lab, read the um, hardware uh, service manual for this thing and see what's what. And for those curious to see the complete user interface, ta-da, here it is. Yes, it is all custom designed uh, for this thing and um, even all the keyboard uh, keys are all, you know, biopsy, framer, all sorts of things, um, all custom designed legends on the keyboard. We've got Doppler, we've got, I have no idea what these um, sliders do. They're not even labeled. Um, but yeah, it's a, you know, a lot of effort goes into designing these things, which is why they cost, you know, I think like new ones cost you know, $50,000 plus or something like that. They're, they're really expensive bits of kit, even back then and today. But uh, yeah, I wouldn't know how to use it. You've got to be a sonographer. And well, I do actually know a sonographer, so maybe I can get some um, help on it perhaps. But um, yeah, hmm. 
I might have to uh, RTFM, I think. And just a quick little look at the back here. Apparently this is the uh, processor uh, board in here and it's got like video, all sorts of video stuff, RGB outs and also it's e whatever ENet is, some sort of networking thing, serial and uh, audio stuff. As I said, I've got a disc in here and it's the uh, one of these uh, magneto optical um, jobs. There you go, look and see the uh, sectors in there, if you look closely at that. That's really, it's really quite nice. I love those things, but they're you know, completely obsolete. So we've got a, um, a rewritable magneto optical disc from Tajin in Made in Japan. So um, a backup, um, it's got the serial number. So yeah, backup OS or something that could come in real handy. But considering that we've got a hardware, um, it's given it's saying we've got a hardware fault then. Yeah, I yeah, no, I don't think it's the operating system. I think it's working just fine. And on the back here, we've got. Uh, does that tell us when it was manufactured? Made in the United States of America in B Bothell, Bothell, in uh, Washington. There you go. And these are all um, for the uh, printer, I, I believe. So this would be uh, all video and, and audio um, stuff, which hooks up to the uh, speakers. If you've ever um, been in for a uh, ultrasound, you'll know. And then there's a couple of uh, cords hanging out here. And the back of the monitor uses like a custom D25 um, thing for doing the audio and stuff like that. There you go. That is the ultrasound unit. I need to go read the manual. Hey guys, we're down in the bunker car park. Yes, we, there's Dave. <laughs> and ta-da, we have our ultrasound machine. And uh, we had to transport it uh, on the ute. And, uh, and all the boards, unfortunately, we had to get it up on here. It was massively heavy. So we had to uh, get all the boards. We, we hope they survived. We were too lazy to um, stick them <laughs> back in the... Uh, thing but anyway we've, we've got the monitor that came off separate and uh, we've got it uh, strapped on here worked all right there's strapping there we go so it uh, the only thing we're not sure about we've got more boards in the back of the ute down in there but um, yep now we've got to because we had to get the weight down to get it off and it's like a couple of I think it's it's close to 200 kilos fully populated and um, so yeah, we're, we'll just be able to lift it off the two of us, hopefully. Hmm. And you'll notice that I use my bag here as an anti-damper um, mechanism. <laughs> Check it out. So that, uh, that sort of, you know, dampened the boards so uh, the vibration on there wouldn't uh, kill them. Anyway, that's, uh, that's kind of like the best we could do at the time because we didn't know we were going to have to take boards out. I didn't think when I was... Uh, going to pick this up that uh, you know we'd be uh, carrying carting bare boards back but I don't uh, oh, you know I should have thought of that anyway Woo! 